Who could it be? It's me, Austin! Oh, son of a bitch! What? It's me, Austin! It was me all along, Austin! Damn, I cannot believe he... What's up my movers and shakers, I'm Dave, this is MS Paints, and this was meant to be a Eureka moment. Don't worry, I've single handedly fixed everything wrong with contrast paints, absolutely nailed it, absolutely fucking lootly nailed it. Turn over the copyright to me right now G-dubs. I'll write the secret formula on a note and tell you where the note is once the 5 million in cash is safely in my hands. Of course, that didn't happen, but I did make some useful mistakes and as I continue to figure out these strange and wonderful paints. Now, I do love me some contrast. And as a man who discovered he had a progressive degenerative condition around the same time these paints hit the market, I was a big mixture of hopeful and sceptical. I went from scorning them as a threatening new quick fix to a practice that I had deeply invested myself in. It's like when I've written a 70 track orchestral cue for a movie soundtrack or a promo campaign and someone who knows the client has made some music on their iPad. Then they profoundly showed this track off to me and asked me if I can do something similar to what they've made in Garage Band Light. And I just kind of grip my teeth and take it because I need that paycheck. And then, obviously, I've chilled out a bit since then. Not towards Garage Band on iPads, absolutely fucking not. No, that still boils my piss. But contrast paint, absolutely. It's allowed me to chew through so much stuff during lockdown and even on commissions. I don't think there's a project that goes by without me using contrast paint on at least one part of a model. I'll even be using it on this huge McFarlane model commission I've got on the go at the minute. Probably through an airbrush in fact, to get the marine armour colour nice. But let's be honest, when contrast paint was announced, it was pitched as the next best thing to a knife that could slice your bread. I am uh, the baddest dude on the planet, cause I am uh, the, the greatest revolution in miniature painting, oh yeah. A lot of folks praised it to the moon, which might be a common saying, I don't know, is it moon and back? To the moon. And a lot of others branded it as snake oil, and both people were kind of right to a degree. It was marketed as a miracle diet, and let's be honest, it's kind of just ink with a specific kind of medium. Which, when you think about it, and if you use inks already, that's not really a bad thing. Inks are what I use the most of after straight acrylics and I was using them in kind of the same way as contrast paint anyway. So a complementary paint line to what I already have in the Citadel paint range and it's pretty thin to use out the pot, just give it me now. But the question for myself as an MS painter and other MS painters out there, did it make my painting and hobby life any easier? Well yeah and no. On the one hand, slapping it on quickly gets me to a foundation uh, that I can then take more time over, but any mistakes I make, especially with conflicting colours, just creates way more work for me down the road. Blue and red, you end up with a permanent spillage zone that requires you to go back to your base coat and pretty much kind of start again if you want it tidy. But on the other hand, I always end up somewhere a lot quicker than I thought I would be with contrast paint. As you can tell by my posturing and procrastination, I don't know how to feel about contrast paint yet. Like for certain things, it is absolutely brilliant. And it's been about 18 months nearly, maybe, and I've used it a lot, but it seems to drastically change what it actually does kind of every time I use it. About a year ago, I did a paint job on these guys, and this was all contrast paint. It looks simple and not particularly popping, but it doesn't look like contrast paint. 
and only a couple of weeks ago I did this, which again doesn't really look too contrast painty. And when I talk about looking like contrast, I'm of course referring to that washed out look that doesn't seem to be a problem to most GW salesmen, but it absolutely drives me up the wall. Like, are you actually trying to sell me this? Don't get me wrong, I absolutely do love this stuff just to reaffirm that, especially over metallics and through an airbrush. But I haven't quite found my groove when applied over the recommended colours and with the recommended methods in the marketing. The ad campaign said quite boldly, finally, one thick coat. And a YouTube series of tutorials by Games Workshop quickly came out saying, yeah, no, don't actually go completely mental with it though. Back to these Chaos guys, I used the Zenithal base coat from brown to mid to ivory. And at least I think I did. And they look pretty good. And my hope for this video was to repeat that process with this Star Wars Legion squad and basically sling my dick around and say that I'd nailed how to get contrast to look the absolute business without telling your friends what it really is. And unfortunately, I, no, that didn't work. And I applied mostly the same colours, same zenithal, like a dark, a mid, and a light. And I know that contrast favours busy surfaces so it can do its thing properly. And I had a feeling the capes on these guys were going to look dog shit anyway, but I didn't expect it all to look as patchy as it did. This was going to be a tutorial on making contrast look amazing and how to do a legion unit in like 45 minutes, but it didn't work out that way. Remember my friend once telling me to treat contrast paints like your weekly shop. Do your big shop at Tesco, which is, you know, classic painting style with acrylics, and to get your bits from Waitrose, with contrast paint. So essentially, have your main feature painted with a strong, consistent paint or a technique. And all the knickknacks, belt buckles, guns, hats, whatever, do those with contrast. And so that's what I kind of backpedaled and ended up doing with these guys. I gutted the large cloaks and went for a desaturated green, going fairly standard three-point paint system. My arm seemed to be behaving itself, so I'm doing a lot of work with acrylics. It's not stuff I want to teach on a channel so much, since everyone and anyone can learn that style from, well, pretty much everyone and anyone. But it's extremely popular for a reason because it works, and I want to practice myself more of it. So I went with that, and I gotta say, it's kind of doing it for me. It's the fastest and laziest paint job that I've done in a while, but I'm kind of okay with the end result. Sure, I did also thump a glaze on there with all the proficiency and precision of a bare knuckle fight that you'd see around my local Morrisons every night, but hey, it kind of works. And if you throw enough plants and static grass on there, courtesy of the incredible diorama Presepe, you can cover up even more sins. So why did I make this video? I don't know! Well, mostly I got this new camera and I need to practice managing the colors and the footage and getting the lighting right. So this video is kind of the product of that in a way. If anyone does have any contrast paint tricks, please do share them in the comments below because I still want to push through with this paint and learn more about it. And I want to one day be able to offer my fellow MS painters a way of getting their painted models on the tabletop in a disability friendly manner, using contrast paint that looks as good as the marketing images. So these guys ultimately turned out pretty nice. It's 50 50 contrast to traditional acrylic. You know, all my Legion stuff is a mishmash of techniques and learning new tricks along the way. And I'll be talking more about Legion in the future because I do love that game and the community around it but these will fit in in terms of just the hodgepodge vibe that I have with my Legion stuff. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're feeling real flush head over to DMS Paints Patreon and get some potentially cool shit. Also check out my other videos for stuff on 3D printed dinosaurs, grimdark terrain, diorama builds, all aimed at folks with additional physical needs. Cheers, I'm out of here.